what's happening YouTube uh, Chris Jones with the world's worst fishing coming back at you again today we're gonna be doing some more plastics in the land is the limit uh, fish bait making cave and uh, today we're gonna be talking Senkos everyone knows what a Senko worm is everyone has probably caught fish on Senko worms and today I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect Senko worm so a Senko worm, also known as a stick bait, is one of the most um, usable, diverse baits in your tackle box. You can do anything with it. You can flip it in heavy cover, you can throw it on a shaky head, you can wacky rig it, you can Texas rig it, you can use it on a Carolina rig, uh, you can bed fish with them. There's like an endless possibility, uh, endless possibilities for Senko worms. They're almost like shrimp in um, Forrest Gump, you know, the fruit of the sea. You can do like a thousand things with shrimp. You can pretty much do a thousand things with Senkos. They are so effective that 60% of the time they work every time. So for today's Senko example, I'm going to be making a color called Backwater Blue. Uh, it's a color that I've made for a couple years now in the, in the Senko worm. So uh, today's video isn't necessarily so much about the color, but it's about um, I, what I think is one, probably the best way to prepare a Senko worm. So for this color, I'm just gonna do about 40 drops of blue. Now, oh, no, lost count. So we're just gonna go ahead and add our blue. And then one of the things that's important with a Senko, you want it to be softer. Uh, I have some around here somewhere. Where's my softener? Found the softener. So, I want a Senko worm to be softer than I would, say, my frog. Um, you know, frogs kind of, you know, you, you really want them to be firmer. You're dragging them through pads, dragging them through weeds. But you really want a Senko worm to, to be really soft. You want it to have a lot of movement, as much movement as possible, um, you know, without making it just completely worthless to where you're just going to cast it right off the hook. So I'm going to add some softener here. I'm going to go ahead and stir in my softener. And what I use is I use a medium blend plastic. So plastic manufacturers, they usually have a soft, medium, medium hard, medium soft, all the way up to super firm. I chose to go with a happy medium. I think it works really well for most of my baits. However, my Cinco worm, I do want it to be noticeably softer. So I add a little softener and that usually gives me the effect that I want. As with anything, a little heat stabilizer. So we're just gonna add a little bit of our scorch protectant there. Um, blue isn't too bad though. You usually don't burn blue unless you reach, you know, the 400 degree mark <laughs> with your plastic, which is never a good idea. That wasn't looking quite dark enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit of color. Then we're gonna restir, and then we are ready for the vacuum chamber. Okay, so this is about done right here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the pump, release the valve, and then you basically let air back into the chamber. So you hear that hissing noise. I'm opening this burp valve and that, if I stop it, you know, it, it, it's quiet again because there's no more air going back into the pot. So I'm basically letting the air back in now that uh, all the air has been removed. And once it's back to zero, I can go ahead and take the lid off. And here is our degassed plastic. Okay, so right now I've got the plastic cooking in the microwave. I've got it all prepared. Next, after it's cooked, we're gonna go ahead and add our glitter, and then most importantly, salt. Okay, so now we've got our blue plastic here that's already good and hot. So now this color, what really sets it off is the gold flake in the blue. So we're gonna go ahead, whoop, the fans kind of blow some of it away. So we're gonna go ahead, and, uh, and this is again, one measuring cup, which is how I do all my formulas. So we're gonna do two quarter teaspoons of the uh, gold. And we're gonna do some black medium sized flake. So we're gonna do two of those. And last but not least, this really sets it off as well. We're gonna do the teeny tiny silver, 
and this stuff a little bit goes a long way and that's going to be our uh, that's going to complete the color of it color portion and what's really cool about the gold is when you put it in dark in, in dark blue such as this it kind of look it kind of has a little bit of a green tint to it as well so that's what we have so far now the next important step salt so any plastic or lure making manufacturer will offer salt and this is non iodized um, it's not the stuff that you use to season your pork chops with uh, I do not recommend eating it but for one measuring cup of plastisol my Cinco recipe is I use a quarter of a measuring cup worth of salt and you want to dump it in slowly and mix as you dump that way it will not clump too bad uh, it's gonna clump a little bit but as long as you're stirring as you're mixing you know kind of like making grits you know you, you kind of want to stir as you pour your grits into your water same process here although I'm sure that does not taste as, as good as grits but that's how I do it so if I really think about my formula a measuring cup of plastisol, a quarter of a measuring cup of salt. I'm basically using one fourth salt per plastic. Um, so, you know, 25% of the mass of my bait, I guess you could say, is now salt. Um, so, that gives me a good amount of salt. It's not over salted, but it's enough to, um, to, to, to give it that, that good salty Cinco feeling that we all know and love. And, uh, you know, it does weaken the bait, you know, salt weakens a bait, but it adds weight and it makes it sink. So if you're going to throw a weightless Cinco, it's actually a good thing that you have a lot of salt because it's going to add enough weight to where you can really cast that bait. Okay, now we're ready to shoot our mold. And the thing about salt, because it sinks, it's going to sink in your plastic. So before you shoot, you want to really mix up well. That way you are evenly distributing the salt uh, throughout the plastic. And now we're going to draw up. And then we're going to shoot our Cinco molds. So there's one, two, probably only, this injector I think is an eight or nine ounce. So I probably only have enough plastic for these first three molds. Yeah. The Cinco's drink a lot of plastic. Going to top off the sprue holes here. And then we'll go ahead and get number four filled. Let's see what the cat coughed up for us. Oh yeah. What a cool color. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, sorry about the camera angle there. We're gonna go ahead and get all of these out of the molds and lay them out for you. And uh, get, a little bit, get, a, get a little bit better light on them. And there's the finished product. We have 16 backwater blue Cinco's. I call them the stogie worm, since they kind of look like a, a long, thin cigar. And uh, you can always tell, you know, it, 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 if they're soft by how they hang, you know, how they droop down, um, you know, if, if it stayed more straight instead of hung down like that, then you know it's a little um, too firm, you know, for most applications but you know I always can make really firm Cinco's for you know us Florida boys that are gonna flip it into a bunch of hyacinths you know you really don't want a super soft Cinco uh, whenever you're doing that but for most applications I think this is what you want right here look how look how nice they package up in the uh, actual uh, land is a limit product bags that is why Cinco's are cool. You can just make them look nice and neat, squirt a little worm oil in there, get them nice and uh, oily. And uh, yep, they have a really, they have a really nice package effect. And uh, that is a great Cinco. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. Hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of the world's worst fishing. I uh, definitely enjoy making the videos. So please, please give me a uh, like and subscribe. And also shoot a comment down below. Uh, let, let me know what you think of the video. If you liked it, did not like it. If you have any questions about plastics or just want to talk fishing. Um, 
certainly uh, more than willing. But um, yeah, that is how we make Cinco's. And um, to me, that's the perfect Cinco. Soft, salty, have a good color. And this is a five inch Cinco. So, you know, there's all different sizes. You can get little two and a half or three inch Cinco's. Uh, you can get, you know, Magnum Cinco's. But this to me is, um, is just kind of the, the standard happy medium Cinco. And um, this is, you know, this can be used for a lot of applications. But uh, yeah, you know, the, the main thing is getting it soft enough and getting it salty enough. And then a lot of times people add scent, you know, so I could always add, you know, some garlic or some shad or, or more importantly, crawfish. I think crawfish works really well. Um, or the licorice stuff, uh, anise. Um, this stuff right here smells like licorice. That always, uh, that seems to be a common scent for Cinco's. But hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, thanks for tuning in again, and we'll see you next time on the world's worst fishing.